Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about how to pour concrete the easy way. My four tips that I follow on all my pours. Stay tuned. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, I just want to say thank you for clicking on the video. Please consider becoming a subscriber. I put out a couple videos a week that has everything to do with concrete. We do all types of concrete flat work. If you're a returning viewer, if you're a subscriber, I just want to thank you for being part of the channel and making this channel a success. So today, what we're talking about is uh, how to pour concrete the easy way. My four tips I follow on pretty much all my pours. And if after watching the video, if you have some more tips, please leave them down in the comments. Now today's pour, we got a 3,200 square foot house and garage. The house is about 2,400 square feet. The garage is around 800 square feet. I'm using, I'm using my regular 3,500 PSI floor mix with fiber mesh for reinforcement and it's got a um, high range water reducer in it and very low air in it. We live in Maine, so we get a lot of freeze and thaw. Uh, most all our pours have just a little bit of air in it. And um, not that this is inside the house will ever get below freezing, but it's just our regular floor mix we use. So first of all, let's talk about, you know, some of the things, my, my first tip is preparation. Now there's a lot of preparation that goes into what I consider just basically pouring a simple floor like this. First of all, when we're a sub on this job, so we just come in and do the flat work, so we're working for the foundation guys here. So when the foundation guys show up to do their footings and their walls, that's when I get a text saying, hey, you know, hey Mike, we got this floor coming up, you know, they give me the address, and usually the, how, the, how big it is and the, the number of the general contractor. So that's that's the first thing I get so I make contact with them and I say okay when you're gonna have the floor ready I'll come out and take a look at it after it's ready so that's that's the beginning part of the preparation is I come I come whether it's a day before the pour two days before five days before or a couple weeks before you know I show up in advance and I'm checking the job out and, and some of the things I want to look for is I get my laser out like on a job like this I'll shoot I'll shoot the top of wall since the top of the concrete wall is the top of the concrete floor and then I'll check the subgrade which is the top of the styrofoam here and I want to go around and check all my thicknesses. Now on this one they're supposed to be four inches thick so I want to get an average you know and make sure they're close to that and if they're not if they're a little bit under or they're a little bit over you know I got to know that so I know how much concrete to order for this job because once they get the styrofoam and the radiant heat down like this they got poly underneath it they're not going to rip it up and fix the subgrade so we pretty much have to go with whatever it is and I need to know just how many yards I need to order so that's kind of kind of one of the first things I do for preparation is I come out and check it out in advance and then once I know that once I know how many yards I need then I know how many concrete trucks I need to call in when I order my concrete I need to be able to tell the guy do we need two trucks or three trucks or four trucks or five trucks or whatever how big the job is this one was actually four trucks so he can prep for that in advance and I usually need to give him at least a week if not two weeks notice for something like that so I'll call him as soon as I know and I'll say I need four trucks on such and such a date uh, I want him to be on site at 7 a.m. so that takes care of that part for me you know then I tell him the mix design we use and and all that stuff and then the next thing I got to do is okay what's my access to this job can I can I drive all around it with a concrete truck can I get can I shoot it out of the truck or do I need to pour this some other way and on this one the only access was right in front of the garage which you'll see here in a bit so I knew I had to get a pump truck and when we have to order a pump truck usually it's two weeks at the minimum two weeks in advance to get a pump truck on on, on your schedule so we got to call them guys up, see the earliest date they can show up for first thing in the morning, and then that kind of dictates the schedule on when we get this thing poured. So now I've got the concrete ordered, I've got the pump ordered, and then that's basically the preparation in advance we need. So after that, that's that's tip number one. You know, get all that stuff done in advance. 
Um, obviously, you got to pick a good day, so you got to get up that morning and check the weather, make sure the weather's going to be good. And if it's not, if it cancels, well, that really screws things up because now you got to reschedule the pump. You may have to reschedule the concrete if they can't get you four trucks the next day. Um, that's that's an ongoing battle with pouring outside, pouring flat work like this. But we have to deal with that a lot. Now, the next tip is the mix design. So if you're going to pour concrete like this and you're going to pour every day, then you want to have the right mix for what you're doing. Most of the floors we do in Maine are, are usually a 3,500 pound mix. We, we can go with 3,000 if we want to. We could go with 4,000 if we want to, but most of them we do a 3,500. We find that's the right or the, the, the good, a good balance between pouring you know, a house floor or a garage floor or you know any type of eve we can even use that on patios if we need to decks and walkways usually for exterior stuff like that we'll go with a 4000 psi up here in maine just for the extra cement content a little bit extra strength and it seems to be a little more durable against freeze and thaw but for houses and garage floors our basic mix is 3500 and then we always use either a mid-range water reducer or a high-range water reducer and that those, those additives right there, those allow us to pour a higher slump concrete, so a wetter, looser concrete, without, uh, without hurting the strength, lowering the strength, and we tend to have a lot less shrinkage cracks when we use those water reducers in the mix. Even though our concrete looks really wet to start, uh, it doesn't end up that way. It's probably a, a three or a four slump in the truck add the additive for the water reducer and it bumps it up to a six and a half, seven, seven and a half slump. And that's what we like to pour every day. So, you know, get your mix design down, get your, if you're gonna use additives, you know, make sure you know what you're doing and what type of additives to, to use based on what type of pour you have. That would be tip number two. Tip number three would be, you know, depending on the size of your job, having enough help there and hopefully some experienced help so for us, you know, the main core of, of guys is, is me, Darren, and Luke. Darren's in the white t-shirt, Luke's in the darker colored t-shirt. And then Tia, my daughter there, she helps us when I need her. And then Harvey, the guy in the gray sweatshirt, he works for himself, um, just the sole proprietor, but, but, and he does all, all types of things, but he's been doing concrete for a long, long time. So we kind of just call him up when we need him, need an extra guy. You know, and he shows up, and he can do he can do pretty much everything we can do. So it's just like just like having another finisher there. So having the right amount of help for the right size job is really key. As as far as getting these jobs in, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. You know, when a concrete truck shows up, there'll be a, an amount of time that you have for that concrete truck to be on the job and you to get it unloaded before they start charging you overtime for that truck. And it's, it's usually on all the concrete slips. Typically for us, it's seven minutes per yard. So a 10 yard truck, we get a little bit over an hour to get out. This, this job right here, it averaged about 10 minutes per truck to unload. And that's just to get it unloaded. You know, he backs up, gets mixed up, dumps into the pump, and we pump it all right out at once without stopping. So it takes about 10, 12 minutes to do that. And then it takes another, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes to get it all screeded and both loaded. But that's, you know, you want to be able to get them, get them unloaded and get them back to the concrete plant in a timely manner. And then, you know, the next time you call, they're going to want to be a little bit more excited about pouring for you than they would for somebody else that took, that took 30 minutes or 60 minutes or an hour, you know, over an hour to get the truck dumped out. So that's tip number three. Make sure you got enough help and enough experience help to get the job done, you know, get the concrete poured out. Make sure they know what they're doing. Everybody's got a little, got a job, you know, and Luke's running the hose, uh, Harvey's breaking down the concrete, I'm shooting grades, magging edges, T is magging edges. You know, this guy's screeding, these guys are raking, this this person bow floats. It's just, it's just a, a, a teamwork type of thing and it keeps things moving steady and, you know, fairly fast if you have that type of, uh, teamwork and you have enough people to do it with and then the fourth thing is 
you know, when you pour jobs like this and you do it every day, you got to have the right tools for the job. You don't want to just show up and, you know, for us, this is, we use a, we use magnesium screeds. We use a power screed for a lot of, a lot of the flat work we do in garages like this with slopes. You can see we're just hand screeding because we want to make sure the slope stays perfect without any vibration in the screed. So we, uh, we hand screed stuff. We got, we got the right rakes. We got concrete rakes for the job. We're not just using shovels and, you know, rakes you'd use, uh, like steel rakes, like landscapers would use. So we got concrete rakes. We got a, a bowl float for a smoother. We got mag floats we're using for a mag float in the edges and, and doing stuff by hand. Um, so the, the basic concrete tools you'll need to pour, there isn't really a lot of them, but the better the tools are, the easier they're gonna make your job. So that would be my, my tip number four is, you know, invest in the right tools and, and make sure your tools are in good shape, not all covered with concrete, nice and clean, uh, lightweight, easy to use, stuff like that. So we're gonna, now what we're doing is we've got the pour in and I'm just gonna show you here what it takes to finish stuff like this. You know, when you're out in the sun, maybe there's a little bit of wind you got a pretty good size, pretty good size house and garage you're doing here. Um, you know, you got to have the right tools for that too, and the right know-how, the right amount of people for that to get the job finished. So we're gonna we're gonna smooth, really smooth power trial finish these floors. That's what the homeowner wanted. Uh, we got multiple trials we're putting on, depending on how the floor's curing, how hard it's getting, how fast it's getting hard, and stuff like that. You can see where we started; it's curing up pretty good. And then actually the third load is at, is curing up pretty good too. So we had to put another trial on to hit that load while the other guy's up there hitting the first load. And then we got the garage here that's going to be setting up pretty quick. So we got to keep an eye on that. And we got to make sure we got a power trial for that too, just in case. So what we're doing is that bigger trial we're just moving down there has a different type of blade on it. We like to use when we first hit the concrete. And then the little one we just put on has what we call a finish blade on it, just a steel, almost like a steel trowel blade that we use after we hit the concrete initially. So it's going to smooth out the concrete a little bit, a little bit better than the, the bigger, heavier duty blade we use for the first time. So that's what Darren's doing right there in the white t-shirt. He's, he's what we call floating the concrete and he's getting out the bow float lines filling in any imperfections you know if there are any tiny little dips or humps that helps smooth that out makes it the floor a little bit flatter and then i'm up there away in the background coming behind him with the finish blades and smoothing it out and you can see luke's already starting in the garage t is going around by hand floating out and hand troweling out the edges making sure the edges all look nice and smooth and professionally done and i would imagine you know they don't usually tell us all the time but I would imagine all the house floor will end up being covered with some type of flooring they're not just going to leave the concrete exposed and then the obviously the garage floor will end up being just exposed concrete unless they do some type of epoxy coating it afterwards but it's now it's a process of you know how fast is it drying and how fast can we hit it with the power trials and that'll determine like how long we can leave the trial shut off in between the hits you know you can't just keep going over it and over it and over it you do have to let it cure up a little bit in between hits if it's not drying too too fast otherwise you're just going to keep working it up working it up and probably creating some humps and dips that you don't really need luke's cutting down the doorways putting a taper on the doorways and then we put a little broom finish on those and an edge we use an edger tool to edge the front of those garage doors so it strengthens up that front edge a little bit. We groove a joint in front of that little three foot door you see in there because it's, it's, it's more likely to crack right there inside that corner of that concrete wall. So we, if it does crack, we want it to crack in that groove or that joint so the crack is kind of hidden and you have a nice straight joint to go in. And then we'll end up saw cutting joints when we get done troweling here, I didn't get it in the video, but we saw cut, as soon as the floor's done here, we saw cut joints in here the same day. So in the garage, we'd have one down the middle each way, and then we'd just put a bunch in the house to make sure if the, if the house floor does want to shrink and crack, it's gonna crack right in the saw joints. But 
that's basically you know what we do on a daily basis if we're doing house and garage floors like this and I you know can I consider it the easy way to pour concrete and the easy way actually to finish concrete if we're all working together but those are my simple tips guys let me know what you guys have if you have any more tips for anybody down in the comments uh, thanks for watching make sure you check out this next video right here click on the like button if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed thanks again mm -hmm.